Welcome back to the second issue of the day. An APC chief team of the AKT on Progressive Congress Stakeholders Forum has kicked against Kaya Defiami's rumored presidential ambition. He says the party wants the APC national leader, Bola Hamed Tinumbu, to succeed President Muhammadu Buhari. He explained that the former Lagos state governor has demonstrated over and over again the capacity to manage human resources. APC Chieftain speaks on why party stakeholders want Tinumbu as president. The lawmaker also added that the APC national leader has invested massively in human development. Joining us to discuss these and some other issues around the 2023 presidency is Jackson Adebayo, who is a public affairs analyst. Good evening, Jackson. Good evening. Okay, let's look at it uh, from a broader perspective. This idea of um, uh, some interest in the Southwest jostling for presidency, do you think we should still leave it at the realm of speculation or we are beginning to see the reality that will come up in 2023? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, ordinarily, if, if, if the country calls Nigeria, wants to go by tradition and by convention, they, they will be saying that by now, after the tenure of uh, Muhammad Bari, then the presidency should come to the southwest extraction. Because we had uh, good luck Jonathan from the south south, and uh, we, we, uh, we had uh, Yaradua from the north, and by now, Bari is sending his second tenure. After the second tenor, then the presidency will come back to the south. And uh, every, you know, zone in the south are entitled to that particular presidency. So, southwest is not an exceptional. And that is why in the southwest, we believe that the presidency will come to us by the third gate of God. And a lot of materials are here in the southwest. That can, be, that can become president, and we believe that one of them will eventually emerge if we put out together. Now, uh, if I understand your calculation correctly, what you're saying is uh, you have only divided it into two regions, and that's the north and the south. You have refused yes. to microzone it to look at um, the south, had the south south. We are yet to, uh, the South has also had the Southwest and the president of Ulusha Gomba Sojo. What about yes. microzoning into the Southeast and not back to Southwest? Yes, yes, yes. We, uh, thank you very much. Yes, we had the Ulusha Gomba Sojo as the president when the democracy marched in 1999. But notwithstanding, the presidency has gone to the South, I mean, to the North. And for the north to the south, in fact, uh, President Bula Jonathan only took an advantage of what happened then, by, because Yadua would have spent eight years. But if we calculate the years that Yadua spent and that of Muhammad Buhari that is currently on the throne, you know that the north has taken the own share of the uh, 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 presidency, of the seat of the presidency. So now if you come back to the south, and in the south, we go into microzone, as you rightly mentioned, well, presidency is not a councillorship election. Hmm. It's not an house assembly election. It's a, it's a question of good materials from the south. And because when it went to the north, there wasn't any microzoning. So when it comes to the south, there can be microzoning also. What will happen is that south will produce the presidency, and the uh, whichever zone, micro zone within the south that produces key remain the south down plus. That is my own take. Interesting, uh, interesting. Uh, and uh, I, I wish uh, we have someone from other region on this platform or this panel 
it may not agree with you, but still looking at the angle you are bringing in now, um, what is this issue about uh, Chinungu versus Fire Me? Uh, is this a sign that uh, these are two different camps? And uh, is there any body language from Fire Me at all that he wants to become president, even when it's looking like that with Tinumbu? Yeah, thank you very much. In the first instance, I'm not a member of uh, All Progressive Congress. I'm a member of People's Democratic Party. And uh, for me, I cannot speak for the All Progressive Congress because. Uh, every party has their own tradition, and they have their own tradition, and they have their own culture, and they have their own line of thought. Our line of thought is that within PDP, we have material that has become president of this particular country. And we have a government, we have a sitting government presently that is expressed enough to become the governor, I mean, to become the president. And we have other people also that are not presently the government, that can become the president. And uh, with that, I think uh, by 2023, the Southwest is ready, much more ready, to produce the president of this particular country. That sounds, that sounds like a strange music, to say the Southwest is ready, and you're talking about that in PDP. I haven't heard that anywhere. Have you seen anybody showing interest at all in PDP saying that, oh, Southwest is time? What we have seen, okay, maybe, maybe, okay, I think I remember that of Body George. And even at that, it seems to not be so keen about it. Don't you think this song is more re resonating in APC rather than PDP? Yes. The APC, you can, you can be hearing people from APC saying that they want to be the president. But notwithstanding, APC is just a party. It's a question, it's just a name. But that is not the name of Yoruba land or the southwestern state. So PDP is existing in the southwestern state. Even though if nobody has come out to say that he wants to become the president, but we know that the stakeholders in the southwest will sit down one day. And they will say that this is the material that we have. And you can negotiate away the, 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 the materials within the PDP. In the first instance, and in the research of it, we have more materials in PDP more than the APC. And that is the, the, that's the funny thing that people don't want to hear, especially those in, in, the, in, the, in the government. And uh, you know, PDP is not a government in the Southwest, except one state. So you can expect that most of the names that will come up for the presidency will definitely come from the APC. But mind you, by the time that we get to the year 2001 and 2021, you will be hearing names that will come out from the PDP. Maybe I should uh, do something very, very, what I call impossible mission here, to see you remove your cloak as a PDP uh, uh, member. And let's talk a bit of the two gladiators we are talking about here. Uh, if you were to speak as just a political analyst, do you see any sense in what uh, uh, the APC chieftain in Ekiti had said, that even though I'm from Ekiti, when you're talking of presidency, Ashiwaju seems to have built more political capital than Fire Me. Any, any, any comment on that? Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, I have to comment on that. I comment on that because both of them are uh, uh, sons of Yoruba land. Both Tinumbu and uh, Fayemi, they are sons of Yoruba land. But naturally, naturally, I am saying naturally, if I am in the position, or maybe I'm in a stakeholder's meeting and they are talking that where would the, uh, uh, the pres next president come from, I would say, the next president must come from the Ekiti state because I'm an Ekiti man. I am first of all an Ekiti man before they can call me a, 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 one of the Yoruba persons. So I will prefer that because I can't go into the politics of APC, but if I'm going to the politics of ethnic, a, 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 whatever, ethnic a, 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 a interest, then I will support my own state 
to become the president. That's what I can only say about that. Now, it's, is it cool to just uh, look at this issue of power from the, from the prism of where you, you come from and not really on competence, not on uh, how much political capital you've built, how much of human capital development you've engaged in, rather than, oh, let it go to the north, let it come to the south, let it come to my state. In fact, you are for that micro, micro zone, the presidency, if there's any word like that, because you are not even looking at region now. You are even looking at state. Can we look at merit rather than this uh, zoning? This is an ageless argument in our political space. Well, I will just, uh, I, will, I will a little bit slide away from that particular line of thought. I will talk generally as an analyst an analyst that what Nigeria needs actually is not the issue of the presidency for now. What we need presently is restructuring. Nobody, and I repeat it, nobody in Nigeria is happy with himself or with his country presently because of the situation of things that we find ourselves. So now, if we are looking for who becomes the president of this country, we'll be looking for somebody that can actually come and provide solutions to the problem that has been developing in us in the recent time and in the past. But in the recent time is the most because we are all angry and hungry in Nigeria today. And who can provide solutions to this is a material that we know. Let for me, if I am in a position to choose, we will be looking for somebody that can actually that can actualize the restructuring of this country, thereby each region will develop on its own and there will be less concentration of power in the center. And the state or the region, whichever way they put it, will now develop on its own. And all this question of I close border today, I close that today, and this one will not come in city <laughs> will never arise again. Because everybody will focus on what will, what will better the life of the people in their region. Jackson. And that's what supposed to be looking. So, how much issue, and we're supposed to be, the only thing that we're supposed to be discussing in Nigeria today is how do we restructure Nigeria to benefit Nigeria? It is not the presidency that we have been enjoying, and we have been enjoying it at, at our own detriment. And that is what happened to us today. Jackson, as lofty and laudable the, the ideas behind restructuring are, uh, have we looked at um, the real hurdle to cross? You remember what happened in 2014 uh, when this document was uh, prepared? We had issues with the lawmakers who said, in the first place, this should have been their job. And uh, I will also take you back to Pronaco, take you back to some attempts that have been made in the past and it's always looking like if the people who were elected are not allowed to do this thing we might just be back to square one so can you share what is possible some have said adopt the 2014 document will the lawmakers adopt it will they be willing to look at the cost of governance that will reduce whatever they go home with will they look at uh, more states these are things that how do we break in here so that this does not look like one of those conversations we've been having? Yeah, thank you very much. The, docu the 2014 document, if it is sincerely, I want you to underline it, if it is sincerely executed, it will solve a lot of problems in this country. Hmm. You know, the first problem that you have in this country is the constitution that the, best, the military bestowed on us. The constitution has a lot of lacuna that has been a, a, a what, what do you call it, a, 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 a cobweb in the reign of progress in Nigeria. So that document solved that particular problem. And that is why, you know, within that document is where you see a, a, a reduction in the cost of governance. Reduction in the cost of governance, within that particular document, you will see it there. Because it speaks a lot of uh, restructuring, a lot of rearrangement, a lot of reinvention of many things that will move Nigeria forward. 
But my problem is this. Sir. Nigeria, that will be there. Those people who are elected to be placed there, fine. They are politicians, they are technocrats, they are this and that. But the, the mentality of Nigeria, has it changed? If it has not changed, then the exclusion may be 40. But mm. if you want to move forward as a country, as a nation, then definitely we must execute it sincerely. And who can execute it? It's only the president and the national assembly. But are the people there to be ready to do this, uh, do justice to this thing as we want it? That is the question that you have. Okay. Uh, it, is not, it is not a matter of whether uh, there are something, there is no man that is perfect. Even Jesus Christ says it, that there is no man that is perfect except God. But notwithstanding, with what is on the, uh, the 2014 document, we can still move forward. Than this. Okay, awesome, awesome. So in clear terms, uh, because we have uh, two more questions for you before we round off. Uh, in clear terms, uh, what do you really think about this agitation for zoning? Is it, will it be necessary if we achieve the restructuring you're talking about? Because there are institutions that if Nigeria is well restructured, where the power from the center is more devolved to the federating unit, the center becomes a bit less attractive. What do you think? Yes. It will be less attractive. Let so, me now tell you something. If there is destruction, the south south, where the oil comes from, they will be determining what happens to their own oil. So nobody is going to have that to share anything again. I think we can understand this. Very now, well. The uh, Southwest, we are mostly farmers. We will consider on our farmer that we have an advantage. That is, we have the pot with us. We have the sea with us. So we will concentrate on that. Nobody will come to Lagos and share anything except the Southwest. Then in the North, they are also normally farmers. You know, they will, they will stay with their own farming products. You know, they say that the rice that is coming now is uh, is planted in, uh, uh, in the north. Yes, let them stay with their rice. Let them stay with their beans. Let them stay with whatever product that they have there. You will discover that everybody will now you know, stay on his own and develop his own. Then, in, in, here in the, in, the, in the southwest, if anybody misbehaves, all of us, we know his father's name, we know his mother's name, we know his street, we know his house, we know his family, then, you know, the, what we will we, we follow in that case. The same thing will happen in the north, the same thing will happen in other zones of the country. So, I don't think there is any problem. Let it be done, and you still wonder. Okay, finally, finally, Jackson. So, where comes first? There is another kind of agitation that we, uh, I think it was pushed by some sections of the country that forget 2023, if restructuring is not attended to, is that asking for too much? Is that kind of uh, confirmment on illegitimacy? Because election is constitutional. It's for four years and it must take place. Don't you think that is asking for too much to say that it is on this premises that we can have election if restructuring is done? Thank you very much. You know, we used to, uh, many people don't know the definition of rev a revolution. Revolution does not mean struggle with time. It doesn't mean struggle with, uh, with uh, weapons. What it means is this kind of agitation. There is no way we, can, we will not be talking about, we forget about 2023. Before 2023, we're supposed to have done the disruption. If we have done the disruption before 2023, then you will not be talking about presidency again. You discover those people who are agitating to become president today, they will not agitate to become president again. Some people will even want to, somebody from Lagos will want to be the governor of Lagos because you know that the resources in Lagos is more than... The people who are talking about presidency because of the, the, the national cake. And what is the national cake? That is the oil money. Okay. The moment the oil money ceases, then you see that... And there is resource control. Okay, thank you so much, Jackson Adebayo, former publicity secretary of PDP in Ekiti State.
Uh, we've Thanks seen your patriotism. We've seen how much you want the Kitty person to be in presidency. Thank you. And we quite appreciate your position on restructuring. Thank you very much. Yes, let's take a short breather. And when we come back, I'll be giving you my take. Please don't go anywhere. Here is my take on what Reverend Father Martin Cooker said and that of the Northern Elders Forum. Very strong message, I must admit, from uh, Reverend Father Cooker on the alleged nepotism and religious uh, bigotry. Yes, such message couldn't have gone without some fire from, I mean, some fire back from the affected ethnic groups or interests. What is, however, significant is the need for leaders and critics alike is to do a soul-searching reflection on our attitude to governance and welfare of the people. What kind of legacy do we want to leave behind is a question begging for answer. Is it a country that is detribalized and is not laced with some kind of uh, religious connotation? This is a question that we must continue to answer in our soul. And that's my take on Plots Politics tonight. And Plots Politics returns tomorrow, same time, same station. I am Coyote Ladende, saying bye for now. <laughs>